Welcome back. In this video, we're reacting to Palantir's FoundryCon US opening remarks by Sham Sankar, Palantir's Chief Operating Officer. I have yet to watch the stream. This section in particular, I'm very excited for in what should be a great segment of this conference. I'll add comments where I feel it's necessary. And also, we are watching in 1.5 times speed. Be back in the Shire and welcome you all here. Um, I wanted to frame out some of the ways that we're thinking about our product and thinking about the product in the context of the world that we do live in, what, what you heard really from, from Alex and from Mike there. I would just like to say also that the production quality in this stream is excellent. You'll see the podium there. They clearly have been thinking about this type of an event for a while, and I think it's great that they've put something together. Bringing Palantir's management to the forefront is really something they need to do more of, and it's great that they're doing it now. Yeah, so it's clear, as we just discussed, that the geopolitical consensus that we've had over the last 40 years, that the world would get more stable, more predictable, more, more peaceful, that's, that's crumbled. And I think something that's less clear, but equally true, is that the software consensus that underpinned that view has also crumbled. In a world that's getting more predictable, the most important thing that you can focus on is the perfect plan, uh, the perfect prediction of what's gonna happen. Yeah. But I, when, when the plans went awry, when all of this stuff crumbled in a world that we're actually living in, one where things are becoming less certain, more unpredictable, less clear, the one thing you actually know is that your plan is wrong and that all of your alpha as an institution is going to come down to your ability to react to the error in your plan, to react to reality. And that, I think, is where we, you know, all the pundits said that software was going to eat the world. From my perspective, between Ukraine, inflation, COVID, and the aftershocks that have followed, it looks much more like the world ate software. You know, how much software that predated those events really withstood the test of time and really helped companies navigate those challenges. And I think the government has always really understood this, that it's not about your plan. You know, I think the saying is that plans are worthless. Planning is invaluable, but plans are worthless. And of course, the saying is that no plan survives first contact. And that's really the, the, the formative experiences that we had is working with customers that viewed the real capability, like how you were going to win, not just be more productive, but how are you going to win? So I would just like to interject here, and I really love what he's saying because it's that DNA of how Palantir started as a, gump, a company with these government contracts and being a government contractor, and that's the DNA of the company, right? Because they're able to apply this mission to, towards these enterprises, towards these corporations, because this is a FoundryCon US presentation. This is about the business side of things but he's talking about it's like this is how we came up as a company this is what we believe in and this is how we execute ability to react to reality faster than the other party could and now that's what we're seeing like in a time of um in a time of stability it was all beta the rising tide lifted all boats you know yeah okay focus on efficiency and in, in the reality that we live in you know I'll you know just to just to interject because i know where he's going with this is beta is important in bull markets alpha is important in bear markets, right? You think in bull markets, in times of stability, in good times overall, everything's doing great. So it's a matter of how much can you leverage on top of the macro, how much can you leverage yourself. But in times of uncertainty, in times of bear markets, in times of instability, it's not about leveraging, it's about focusing on execution and winning the small fight. Let's see what he says about alpha in relation to Palantir. It's back in a big way. And, and that is going to be your competitive advantage as an institution going forward. Alpha. So when we look at Ukraine and COVID inflation, what we see is that literally every function of every business is breaking under these stresses. And, and what's interesting about the phenomenon, and Ari's question actually hit it, it, it's not the, you know, the aftershocks are more profound and dislocative than the initial earthquake itself. And those things are continuing to ricochet around. And it seems very unlikely that we're going to get into some sort of, you know, emergent stable equilibrium like this. It's, it's actually going to be a place that we have to continue responding and reacting. And, and that is exactly the world that we built our software for, to be the agility layer that would help your enterprise respond to everything that's changing here. So whether that's optimizing patient bed utilization and nurse staffing levels at a hospital whose fundamental labor model and backlog has been dislocated massively from, from COVID and everything after that, um, or it's driving supply chain visibility into what's clear to build. We have started 25 major supply chain projects this year alone, where that's managing logistics in the face of now increasing fuel prices, but before that it was truck shortages, worker shortages, and increasingly tight um, fulfillment windows where you can actually go and capture the revenue. We're keeping automotive factories open when you realize that every single wiring harness that you put, you know, $5 part that you put into your car comes from Ukraine. How do you dynamically reprioritize your customer yeah. orders and the production plan that you're gonna have in a way that, that keeps everything fully employed here. And, and that's, that's how we think about, um, you know, that, that is the world that for the better part of 15 years we built our software for. So when we think about our, our software platforms, we really think about them as operating systems, not systems of insight, but really the way that your business runs, you know, operating systems that, that aspire to act as the nervous system. So this is really something I wanna hear more about. It'll be interesting to see where he's going with this, right? Because Palantir as an operating system is a totally different way of thinking about things compared to we just use Palantir software for one given 
objective, right? And if Palantir is able to establish themselves as their goal has clearly been as an operating system for enterprises, that means they're not only tackling a thin slice, they're tackling a thick slice of the software used throughout organizations and they can continue to grow. They've developed hundreds of applications that if they pitch it right, and if the applications are able to be customized and adapted correctly to an organization, then they really can take over the entire organization and become that operating system. So let's see what he has to say here. It's the cardiovascular system of your enterprise, Gotham, Foundry, Apollo. It creates a single pane of, of glass to help you execute your mission in Gotham's context or run your business with Foundry or deliver your software in Apollo sense. And Gotham is very much focused in the defense context on uh, AI enabling the kill chain for deterrence. Really a lot of the themes that Alex had spoken about here. But for us, that means operating across all domains from space to mud and integrating every sensor with every shooter and getting faster and faster at helping humans make decisions uh, and, and outcompete the adversary. In the foundry context, now, now going from kill chains to supply chains, it's really about connecting and integrating the decision making within your value chain, not just within your four walls, but really the entirety of your value chain from, from your suppliers to your customers. That's the equivalent of from your sensors to your shooters there. And in doing so, it's focused on making you more different, not more similar. You know, this is not productivity software like Zoom that's just about you know, improving how efficient you can do something. It's about being the ultimate expression of your strategy as a business, which is going to be different than your competitors, going to be different than adjacent industries. Uh, that, that, that is the nature of Alpha, that you have to be more different and differentiated than anyone else. And these platforms, they focus on, on time to value. Like That's where we see real transformation happen here. And of course, it took us 15 years and $3 billion to, to build this software, but what it's really allowed us to do is to build the software the world needs before it knows it needs it because we've had this monastic commitment to focusing on delivering end-to-end -end outcomes. So here it is, right? Here's the pitch is Palantir saying, we've spent 15 years developing this software. We've spent $3 billion developing this software. Here it is. We will license it to you. You can use it from us. We put in the time, we've put in the effort, we had the mission and the alignment to get it this far. Now you as a company, instead of investing all of that time and capital to build it yourself, you can get it from us. So here he's talking about the time to value, which I really think is the number one sales pitch from Palantir's perspective, remember, because this is a marketing event for Palantir's Foundry product. And the time to value is essentially saying, you pay us, and we'll get you value as fast as possible. And think about the true valuation of a company that can deliver value almost instantaneously after getting paid. That is true value right there. And, and the more that Palantir can get its software time to value down to zero or marginally close to that, the more it becomes a no-brainer to use its products. We're able to power the Afghan evacuation with 22 hours notice. We were able to build the US and UK COVID vaccine supply chains with five weeks notice. Of course, it's, it's more like 15 years plus five weeks, so 15 years plus 22 hours. There it is. That's exactly what we were both thinking about in regards to putting in the upfront work where it becomes unreasonable for someone making a decision in terms of in their own organization, should we choose to build out this software ourselves, right? Because Palantir talks about its main competition being its client's choice to develop its own version of an internal operating system versus choosing to license Palantir's existing work. So the pitch is we've done all the work, you're paying to get that time to value. But that, that monastic focus is what helps you understand what is left to build. Uh, and, and that, as a result, is, is powering this flywheel for us. We're just building so much new product, product that we, we hope will meet the moments for the world that we see coming uh, in, in, in the near term here. Some of this you can see uh, in, in, throughout the conference here, a software like MetaConstellation, which has a digital twin of commercial space um, collection capabilities and allows you to reimagine how you actually drive tasking. And certainly that has an effect on the battlefield, but it's also helping utility scale solar companies image very remote solar insta installations and better understand how to do predictive maintenance and how to optimize their solar production. Software like SkyKit that ten takes MetaConstellation and puts it in a portable form factor for, for soldiers in the field to actually use to drive operational tasking or Pipeline Builder, which has transformed the economics of data integration. It, it, at the NHS in the UK, it, it has tripled the speed by which they're able to bring data from 400 different hospitals together uh, for clinical outcomes. Foundry Unchained now means that you can run Foundry on top of your extant cloud data warehouses. And uh, uh, FedStart, which builds on our Apollo offering, is going to enable software companies in the US to actually get FedRAMP and IL-6 certification literally overnight. So just more and more stuff here that we think is gonna be key to, to the events that are about to come. Yeah. But this is FoundryCon, so let's focus a little bit on, on Foundry for a second here. When I think about Foundry and the world that, that we're likely to see, the challenges that our customers face, there, there are, I think, really three critical capabilities that every institution is going to need to, to navigate this. So I would take a guess here in regards to one of those three being the digital twin, uh, another being uh, just in general, I would say the time to value, but I know he's talking about capabilities potentially in regards to the ontology. And third, I would have probably have to think about it a bit more, but in regards to access controls in in regards to the data let's see what the 
the three differentiated capabilities of Palantir Foundry are. And uh, the first of these is that, that Foundry makes the marginal cost of data integration effectively zero. Yep. The cynical way to think about Palantir that. is that it took something as sexy as James Bond to motivate engineers to work on a problem as boring as data integration. Right? Uh, but we have productized this. Like Instead of having lots of humans going out and trying to bring data together, we have software-defined data integration. And for things that cannot be completely productized, you have Pipeline Builder that just helps you do it 10 times faster than your alternative. And this means data integration goes from being a liability to an asset. We were able to integrate with each of the 6,000 hospitals in the U.S. in the first three weeks of the pandemic to create the first national level of visibility into ICU bed utilization, PPE consumption rates, and ventilator capacity. Each of these hospitals has a system that's kind of unique and bespoke and messed up in its own way. That's the, that's the nature of these things. And you can't really go at that speed or scale unless you have software that's writing its own data pipelines for you. We were able to bring 26 different ERP systems together in less than two weeks. You know, not, not two decades, not two years, in less than two weeks. And this is the single pane of data. I think that's a really crucial capability and concept for every institution. But data integration is not inherently valuable. It's a means to an end. It gets you to the starting line. What are you supposed to do now with this integrated data? And the second major pillar is that people will need to radically transform their own marginal cost of application development. How long is it going to take you to build new applications that actually operate your business? I don't mean dashboards that just give you insights. I mean the actual applications that are interconnected to each other that, allow, that integrate with your underlying transa your existing extant transactional investments so that you can allocate inventory, so that you can change your production plan, so that you can task a drone. That's absolutely crucial. In the first two days of, the, of having that integrated data foundation, the US government was able to build their national level PPE allocator. So you can think about having ICU bed utilization, ventilator capacity, inventory levels. That, that, that's the demand side of the forecast. Where might things need to go? Now, how do I, how do I connect that up into my supply chain? And just having, you know, it's not two months, it's not many months, it's two days to build an application that frontline users in all 50 states and tribes and jurisdictions can use to drive this decision making on the front line. And the third capability that integrates that operational reality with strategy is the digital twin. Yep. And to me, this is one of the most native modeling and simulation capability that allows you to react to reality. You know, if your plan was perfect, you wouldn't really need this. But when things happen in the world, when your supplier gives you half of what they said they were going to give you, when the disease spreads in ways that you hadn't anticipated, you need to be able to ask the question, what can I do now? And what can I do now is in of itself a function of your own goal, your own strategy and institution. Are you trying to optimize revenue, optimize production, um, optimize customer fulfillment and satisfaction? The I wonder what Palantir is trying to optimize <laughs> um, in regards to what a company like Palantir should be optimizing for it. And I believe it should be optimizing for as they are the strength of their financials and growing, right? Extending vertically and horizontally. Uh, and I think they're doing that. I don't know. I'd be interested in what you think. Let me know in the comments. That question will depend on the day. It'll depend on your goals. It'll depend on what's going on here. How do you get the system to generate courses of action for you, to use the government terminology on this, that enables the operator to quickly execute something and then understand the full consequences of what might happen, not only within their own function. You know, it's great if you can buy something 30% off if your job is procurement, but if that has a 40% less yield in production, you know, you're just passing the buck on. So how do you model this? This is, this is the integrated value chain here. How do you model this holistically and understand what's actually in the best interest of the business? This is going to change the world, right? Digital twin ontologies, like not just from Palantir, right? They're not the only ones working on this, but to be able to model a situation and make tweaks to a future outcome and see the consequences of that it's just unreal and the compute power right hasn't always been there and it's now getting there with such advanced technology uh, and so these are this is really the core of what we've invested in continue investing in foundry i think you'll see some of these themes from the speakers today and that, that's really the most important part here which is while i am really excited to have you all here and hear your feedback and what's working what's not working and in my own little lens imagine the future of what we'll continue to build i think the most exciting part for you all is to hear from each other and, and hear about the challenges and experiences and and what could be so thank you once again for joining us excellent so that was sham sankar palantir coo as i expected a great quick talk from him in regards to the state of palantir's foundry product FoundryCon US is Palantir's first conference. They're bringing up a lot of actual customers of Palantir's product to talk about it and their experience and how transformational it is, as Palantir's tagline is, foundational software of tomorrow delivered today. And Sham did a great job outlining the reasons why, right? And he talked about there's so much left to build, but at the same time, there's so much we've accomplished, right? As a company that was founded nearly two decades ago, they've spent 15 years building this product, have committed $3 billion to it, and now it's free cash flow positive. It's growing like crazy. It was awesome to get an update from him. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you enjoyed this reaction or not. I'll catch you in the next video.